In this last lecture of this first module, this introductory module and the, uh, the first, uh, first lecture of our uh, part one, which is the general overall perspective of business, we'll offer a little bit of historic context about the US economic system. The United States is a mixed economy with a foundation based on capitalism. To understand the current state of the American economy and its effect on business practices, it's helpful to examine its history and the role that an entrepreneur, the entrepreneurial principles and entrepreneurism has on, on the economy and how the government interacts with the economy. Before the colonization of North America, of course, uh, Native Americans lived in a, uh, what's essentially a hunter-gatherer kind of model in farming. Uh, there was some trade among farm, uh, some trade among various tribes, but by and large, it was hunter-gathering and and, um, and and an agricultural model. The colonists who came uh, after the uh, after uh, the 1600s, um, they operated primarily an agricultural economy. But as the nation expanded towards the west, they found natural resources like coal, copper, iron ore. And they used them to produce various goods like horseshoes, farm implements, kitchen utensils, and of course, some trade developed around those, um, those inventions. Some families also spent time turning materials, raw materials into clothing, household goods, you know, with cotton, the skins, and that sort of thing, wool. Because these goods were produced at home, this system is called the domestic system. In the 19th century, the Industrial Revolution brought the development of new technologies in factories. The factory brought together all the resources needed to make a product, materials, machines, workers. Then we had railroads. They brought major changes, allowing farmers to send their goods and surplus crops and goods all over the nation and barter them for sale. Markets started to develop. Factories began to spring up along the, railway, along the railways to manufacture farm equipment and a variety of other goods that were shipped along the rails. Industrialization brought significant increase to the prosperity in the United States and it, the U.S. gradually became a manufacturing economy. That's one that's devoted to producing goods and providing services rather than just producing agricultural products, uh, food goods and the like. Businesses began, became more concerned with the needs of the consumer. And once you have a lot of factory capacity, you're producing more perhaps than consumers would just buy just because they've never seen this before and they really want it. Now they choose between different products. And that's when the U.S. entered into what's called a marketing economy because these uh, develops occurred in this free market system, free enterprise system, where the consumers were determining which goods and services they wanted to buy. And so they, for, therefore, their preferences and the markets and the pricing determined which goods and services were produced. They did this by purchasing the products they like at the prices they were willing to pay. So that was using the pricing system as a signal to manufacturers about what to make, how much to make of various products and services, depending upon what people were willing to buy and at what prices. So that's the way this information flow through markets is so effective. After World War II, with the increased standard of living, Americans had more money and more time. And so the profile of family was changing. Today, there's uh, many single parent families and individuals living alone and two parent families. Both parents often work. Americans are increasingly paying others to do various kinds of tasks at home, domestic tasks like cooking, laundry, landscaping, and child care. And these trends have gradually changed the United States into what's called a service economy, which is one that is devoted to the production of services that other people can purchase to make life easy for their busy customers. Service industries include such things as restaurants, banking, health care, child care, auto repair, leisure related industries, and even educations. These are growing rapidly and they now account 
for as much as 80% of the U.S. economy. These trends continue with new technologies and they're contributing new service products all the time like Uber and others based upon technologies and digital media that we can provide it instantaneously at our fingertips with smartphones, social networking, and virtual worlds. A nice long story of how we got to where we are and things are changing rapidly and continue to change and will continue to change for years to come. It's good to know where you came from to kind of understand where we might be going. In this system, the entrepreneur plays a key role. They're individuals who identify an unmet, need, an unmet, unmet need in the economy and they're willing to take risks. And so they take the risk of their wealth and their time and their effort to try to develop a product or a service that will meet that need. Often, these innovative products or new ways of doing things disrupt the current players in the market and fundamentally change important aspects of the economy. The internet, for example, or Facebook have changed radically how we interact with one another and how we how we purchase and I, how we learn about new goods and services and purchase them. Then we have drones and virtual reality are, on the, are coming in the, in the future, driverless cars, all sorts of potentially new products and services. Just think about what some ideas, some possibilities that were created with services that, that, were, uh, that model themselves on the Pokemon Go view of creating a virtual view of the world that you're in. Instead of just finding uh, Pokemon characters, you could buy goods and services or identify opportunities you might not see otherwise for having some sort of a leisure or some other kind of a service uh, event in your life, or some experience. The free enterprise system provides conditions necessary for entrepreneurs to succeed. In the past, entrepreneurs were often inventors who brought all the factors of production together to produce a new product. Um, others were so-called captains of industry, invested in the country's growth. Um, now, we often have entrepreneurs that are creating new software applications and different virtual environments online, uh, videos on YouTube that are entertainment, that provide entertainment to us, um, that puts a lot of power for innovation and change in entrepreneurs through social media, media and the virtual environments. Entrepreneurs constantly change the American business practices with these various kinds of technologies and inventions and different management techniques that are also introduced in entrepreneurial activities. Entrepreneurship requires certain abilities and skills. You have to evaluate risk. You have to understand innovation, creativity. And of course, the system itself has to have incentives that will bring them rewards. Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Mark Zuckerberg, successful, highly successful entrepreneurs. There are many others I'm sure that you can think of. Um, Elon Musk, with, um, who's, who was, was one of the founders and one of the, uh, the entrepreneurs in uh, PayPal and is now developing Tesla and SpaceX and other possible uh, new companies. These are why they're so important. These are very important to a free market economy because it, it is what enables change and adaptation and innovation in the economy. The flip side of the bottom up role of the entrepreneur is the role of government in the economy. The American economy is, as we've described, a modified capitalism. Uh, the government regulates certain businesses. Uh, federal, state, and local governments all intervene in the economy to make sure that the, uh, the products and services that are purchased are, don't undermine the social fabric, if you will. Uh, if you're having some work done around your house, you might have to have a building inspector to make sure the plumbing or the electrical doesn't put it, isn't put in, it's a safety risk because that would incur, not only might the house burn down if it's an electrical problem, 
but it would incur the fire department has to come in so the system the society would have to have a larger emergency services group so by putting these kinds of regulations it modifies just this pure um, idea of free market capitalism they're designed they should be designed laws and regulations to promote competition and at the same time protecting consumers and employees and also increasingly realization that there has to be protections on the environment other agencies measure the health of the economy they figure out what's necessary to make steps to minimize disruptive effects of fluctuations and to reduce unemployment and not only reduce unemployment but provide a safety net for those who are who do become unemployed um, they uh, the federal there are other agencies that are that are put in place in particular the Federal Reserve Board which tries to intervene when they understand things are happening in the economy that are creating risk they try to spur growth by moving money they call it the money supply we'll talk more about this at the end of the course um, but they in in it put money into the economy so people have more money to spend and businesses have more money uh, to hire people to create demand and hopefully cause the economy that might be slowing down and moving into a contraction and bring it back up into an expansion just because you have now more money into the, in the in the system and that's another uh, important government function that helps move the American economy forward um, all of these are uh, important elements of how the government at the macro level supports keeping the system moving forward and some of the things that might move it off the rails pushing it back onto the rails in contrast to in our prior pre prior discussion the entrepreneur being the bottom-up change agent kind of like the the gadfly that's making things change and different the government keeps it all sort of moving in the right direction and of course there's a difficult balance there all of this occurs in the context of ethical and social responsibility of businesses in the community this is the the middle range organizations that are operating within this government umbrella under this government umbrella but also with these entrepreneurs running around among them the organizations that are currently there um, in the past few years there's been a number of scandals at different kinds of corporations Enron countrywide British Petroleum different banks like Bank of America and Citigroup business ethics has uh, gotten much more visibility um, it's generally referred to business ethics generally considered the standards and principles that are used by society to define appropriate and inappropriate conduct in the marketplace or in the workplace in many cases these standards have been codified into laws that prohibit certain actions calling them unacceptable uh, society is increasingly demanding that business people behave in a socially responsible manner towards not only the, the customers but also their employees to investors to government regulators to communities and even to the natural environment these are all constraints on free market interactions if you think about it we talked earlier about them but more it's making sure the market doesn't drive things in the wrong direction get off the rails no area is more debated online than, uh, than than online privacy and and the issues associated with uh, being able to hack different organizations while one view is that ethics and social responsibility are a good supplement to good business activities there's an also an alternative viewpoint research has shown that ethical behavior could not only enhance a company's reputation but also also drive incremental profits because organizations people want to work with organizations that are socially responsible to promote social responsibility and ethical behavior while achieving organizational goals businesses can monitor monitor the changes and the trends and the society's values in their own values internally they can determine what society wants from them what individuals in their communities want from them and attempt to predict the long-term effects of their decisions 
a company's reputation depends upon its profit, but also the longer term profit will be affected by its ethics and its social responsibility, particularly as the society gets more aware of the interactions between business and society. The next module, module two of this course, will go more deeply into the important concerns and impacts and how the how ethics and social responsibility can be considered and how it might affect one's own career in the workplace and in the businesses that we deal with. That's what will be in the very next the next lecture or the next module, module two. Please participate in the online discussion about the content of this module that's available on Moodle. Please share your insights on the following questions. What is the fundamental goal of business? Do all organizations share this goal? Who are the main participants in the business environment? What are their main activities? What other factors have an impact on the conduct of business in the United States? Explain the terms supply, demand, equilibrium price, and competition. How, are, how do these forces interact in the American economy? And lastly, list and define the various measures of government and how they may be used to gauge the state of their economies. If unemployment is high, will the growth of GDP be great or will it be small? Thank you for participating in this discussion and I look forward to reading your insights.